So the persons who have been named in there, the CEO of GMPC and the board chairman, who is actually joining us on the line now, Freddie Wasmeoble. Sir, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Imoru, thank you very much. How are you doing, sir? It's been a long time, Moro. Do you miss politics? A lot of a lot is happening in Kumewu today. You should have been there, thinking the affairs, busily I, I, I looking for have, votes. I should have been there. I, I should have been there, but I never had the opportunity. To, of course, I wasn't feeling too oh. good. That's why I wasn't there. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I see, I see, I see. Anyway, uh, you are you are in the news all over the place, not for good reason. They say you want to sell our assets to somebody in South Africa that you are not pushing the interests of Ghanaians. To it, you are not being patriotic. What is the story? I say being in the news is always good for politicians. So when you ask me, have I, am I missing politics? I say, of course, I'm still in the news. That's why you are asking me questions, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's right. That's right. Yes, I, indeed, I don't know the text uh, from which uh, you just asked uh, this question, but I've just been informed. I was at a board meeting. I just closed and... Uh, I, I was uh, very reluctant in uh, attending to you, but be it as it may, we have fee insisted that I should talk to you for briefly. And uh, uh, from what you read, it means about uh, a number of uh, very, very significant and uh, important uh, uh, SC, it SC C CSOs, civil society CSOs. organizations. Civil society organizations which are very respectable. They have all come together, orchestrated, and have asked that the CEO, and including myself, I should be uh, asked to step down if we are not our remainder in the industry, our remaining in the industry is detrimental to us. I'm surprised at them. I don't know why they come now to that. On what, based on which part? Uh, I have not been given the, the basis for which they are asking this. And unless, of course, I get convinced that somebody is doing some pure mischief. That's why they are doing it. But mm -hmm. please, what is the story? Okay. The story that I believe has come out is that uh, a South African company, Petro Estate, which happens to be one of the contractors that have interest in uh, some oil field in, in Ghana have uh, put up a stake or they have uh, claimed their stake in some shares that Anadako, who was also uh, a shareholder in the field, trying to dispose of. And the Ghana, which maybe has had the opportunity of having all the uh, shares, but the people are still insisting that they are entitled to it and that the GOA, that is under the joint uh, operation, uh, joint joint operations of the trail, and then based on the petrol, uh, the petroleum contract that or the petroleum agreement that is signed with Ghana, that they are also entitled to it. It's a controversy. And uh, we're trying to make sure that there is some kind of uh, agreement on it. And we are trying to broker that kind of uh, 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 agreement. And that is all. We have not reached much. Okay. I have so, so, so let me just understand. So does it mean Anadako is the organization or company that is doing the business with Petro SA, not necessarily GMPC? Is that the case? No, no. Uh, Anadako has disposed of it. I just had the shares. So, so is it the same shares that Anadaku, Anadaku disposed of that Petro That's SA right. is interested in? That's right. They said that they under the joint operation agreement that they themselves are also entitled to return that they should be equally offered. And let them, if they refuse, then of course someone that can all they didn't refuse it, they, are, they could share out of it. And that's what they are claiming. And when you and say they, they do you mean Petro SA? They are. Petro they are so they are saying that they should be given the first right of refusal. That's right. That's right. That's what they're saying. Okay. This request has come to GM. This, this is wrong. This is the one I'm not, I'm not concluding. And I'm saying that could lead to a litigation. Either we say that they are entitled to it, which 
which they will say they will take it off, but 7% that you're talking of, or we could share it. And uh, I wrote a letter saying that if they don't mind, we could uh, uh, come to an agreement and they would take 50%, we would take 50%. And, but that is subject to the uh, consent and approval of the Minister of Energy. I wrote that letter to them because we've been very friendly to each other over time, while well, within two years, because they had they started in 2021, and they are not giving up. And we are thought that maybe we could persuade them to do so, but they haven't done it, and they still insist on it. And it could easily, easily lead to some long-standing litigation. So we proposed it to them. I personally wrote it and proposed it to them to their chairman. And you are and offering you are offering them 50 percent. 50 percent or seven percent. Okay, 50% of the 7%. Was, what, what, what were they asking for? Were they asking for, for a Either higher... Either they take it off. Either they take it off. Oh, so they wanted the full 7% and you are proposing That's that. Right. No, we divide that into two. We take three That's and a half, you take proposal. three and a half. My, but, but honestly, the minister had already asked me that, please stop, don't do it. No? Was that, that before you wrote your letter or after you wrote your letter that the minister told I, you this? I had after, before you wrote the letter, six or seven months ago, it's asked that we shouldn't uh, uh, negotiate on that. But it was after seven months, the people are still coming to us. And therefore, that's why I propose that we could do that. But it's subject to the consent and agreement of the minister. And that's actually what has angered the CSOs, because yeah. part, part of their statement, they said that they have information that the Minister of Energy, Matthew Puku Prempe, has objected to this transaction by the chairman of GMPC board, that's you, is pushing this transaction to the extent that the Minister of Energy had written to the Jubilee House over this transaction. It appears that you did not respect your minister then. No, that is not the issue. I'm saying that it was not a question of disrespect. I did that conscious of my fiduciary uh, responsibility as a chairman and as a board. That's what I decided on that. And I made it clear that it is subject to its approval. But when you say that don't engage them at all, it, it becomes a bit a bit difficult for an autonomous body like the uh, GMPC, which is a corporation, for you to say don't even engage them at all. It, it, it's quite difficult. That's what I did, and uh, he was so happy about it. I appreciate that fully really well. I see. So your letter is not binding legally, whatsoever you say. At all. At all. So it should not be interpreted to mean that you have signed off 50% of our... I have of not our... signed anything, my brother. Anybody who says that to that is... Uh, the other doesn't understand what is happening or pure, plain, pure business. That's all. So what's the way forward now? The way forward is that the company would have to go to the minister for possible approval or rejection. You have washed your hands off it. Is that what it means? Absolutely. That's what it means. That is all it means. That we wash our hands off it. The minister will decide to complete to either uh, uh, approve of it or disapprove of it. What? But even then, my board members, we met today, they said that, well, let's listen, let's wash our hands of it now. Totally, let the minister uh, decide on what he thinks is right. And then we, 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 we get along with that. That's mm -hmm. what but then again you've just mentioned that you are an autonomous body if you are washing your hands off then it means you are washing you, you are shaking you are shaking your responsibility as we a... are shaking our responsibility but i it, as an individual i can't carry along the whole board so they we decided today that it's it, it either that way or let the minister do what he... you sound like you're not happy with the minister's intervention your board is not happy But you don't have to be happy or sad about it. So, do you do you think that the minister is usurping your powers as a as a company? Well, I, I wouldn't go to that extent. I wouldn't go to that. The minister has to feel very strongly about it, and I respect his views and I respect his position. I'm sorry, he's the se sector minister. He decides policy. But, but honorable, if, if the sector minister says don't do A and you go ahead to do it, your position may be untenable, don't you think? It, it, it appears that uh, that may be the position at the moment that it says. Uh, but I did say that, no, 
it is not that we are saying you will go ahead and, 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 and as it were, decide to sell off or to give up 50% of the shares. What I decided on is that subject to disapproval or disapproval. That's all. Yes, but if he had already prior to your letter said do not do it and you still wrote and off made such an offer, then it appears there's a rift. Is there a power play issue between you and the ministry? It is not a power play. I think I, I, you, are, you are misunderstanding me. What I'm saying is that earlier on, it's about six, seven months that the letter came out. And then we decided that, I decided that, let's uh, uh, at least engage them. And then if uh, we do engage them and try to persuade the minister, and he doesn't agree to that, then, of course, we wash our hands off. There's a company called Litasco in the mix. What do you know about that? Um, not too much about it, I must be honest with you. Not too much about Litasco, except that we've been, we dealt with them in the past, and they have been... Uh, they helped us to, to pay for some debts that we have and continue to extend to us uh, some loans for us to continue having enough fuel for Ghana electricity. You know? So on our back, we borrowed money from them and then they've used what our bank balance as a guarantee for them to continue supplying electricity to the independent power producers in the country. Okay, I'm asking this because I've seen a letter that the Minister of Finance, uh, the Minister of Energy wrote to you uh, in relation to this stick and uh, talking about a number of other issues. This letter was dated um, 16th May 2023. That's just a week or so ago. And it has to do with the um, position on uh, the the earlier letter that the minister sent to you on 28th October, which is talking about uh, a conversation that he has had with the Minister for uh, Natural Resources from South Africa and the instruction to you that you should not, you should cease any further negotiation with Petro SA on matters of Petro SA's uh, intended preemption. The last question I would have is that someone is interested in knowing um, who made the first offer in this matter. Honestly, honestly, they, they they wanted to say that they would have uh, after some they said that they would like to uh, uh, what is it? They, we've been having meetings and they said that if we want to they want to be nice to us, we, we should take twenty five percent and they would take seventy five percent of the seven percent of and I said no, that's not fair. They should rather take fifty percent and let us have fifty percent too. That's so why it's been back and forth. Either they take all, or they take a, a larger proportion of the of, of, of the total uh, share number, uh, total number of shares. So for you, <laughs> for you, this fifty fifty offer is in the best interest of Ghana. It is in the best interest of Ghana. Either we, we stand the risk of losing all and gaining nothing out of it. The issue of the issue of petro the issue of patrioti patriotism would come up when these conversations happen. So the conversation would be that you are giving off our interest when the minister of energy is trying to protect that same interest. And some people may talk, may not understand it. They would think that it's as simple as that, but it it involves some legality, you know, it involves, involves some law. Uh, the petroleum agreement that they entered into, the joint operation agreement. All these things are relevant. And then the South Africans will not make a demand based on nothing. They also have made it. They've contacted their lawyers and uh, they insist on it. Over these two years, they have been insisting on it. So please, it's, it's not as simple as that. So that's why I'm saying that I wish it had not been uh, a subject for football in the public. But it, it, it should be among business interest to be about investors mm. and uh, those who we own the natural resource. That's how people have decided to talk about it a lot in the media as well. That's why you're asking me a few questions. I'm not going fully out to tell you more about it, but okay. it, 
It's not as simple as that. But the resignation will not happen. That they say I should resign. Yeah, they say you should you should leave or you should be fired. Well, I myself, well, if I'm fired, I, I'm not the one who appointed myself. It's possible I could be fired, but uh, I don't see the reason why people ask me over this issue. I've done nothing wrong. I've examined my conscience. I thought I was protecting the interests of the of the nation. I'm convinced about that in good faith. And if I just think otherwise, and those who appointed me, the powers that he appointed me decide that you should leave. So be it. Has the president spoken to you about this since the issue came up? Yes, spoken to me about it. Yes. Did you give? Did he ask for clarification, or he asked you to give him back his job? We haven't got to that extent yet. Do you see that coming? I don't or, see it. Or do you think you've convinced the president with your explanation? Like it's not a question of convincing the president. It's the facts will speak for them for themselves. You know, the law will, will, will talk, and they've asked for a few documents about it. And, we definitely deem that the, the president who maybe invite the minister and invite me as well and then point out where a few mistakes have gone on and where we should have been agreeable and then where we should have, you know, come together. And or if we disagree, then, of course, the minister's position would prevail. That's all. Just to be on a safe and a sure side, because it's on national radio, the two, of you are, the two of you are public officers. Do Ghanaians have your word that you and your minister are in good terms and that there's no petty uh, squabble or quibbling happening at the energy sector of Ghana? Umaru Sanders, I don't think, I don't think we have uh, any differences that are so serious that it, 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 it's, it's detrimental to the interests of Ghana. Thank you. You know, you know, you know, you know, Napo has strong opinion. And uh, I'm also a little... Uh, uh, you know, I'm a little determined when I'm talking about anything that I know of. But we, the two of us, we, we, today we met. Today we were at the board meeting himself. Did, we exchanged ideas nicely. Did you, you wish him, did you wish him happy birthday? We all wish him happy birthday. <laughs> I didn't know until when you came to us. I think, I think we could sort out any differences that exist. That's, that's not, please, please do. <laughs> please do. You are senior. You are senior. Member of the, of the <laughs> thank you, Morris. Thank you for advice. Wish, yeah. wish you all the best, Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. That's a uh, former chairman of the New Patriotic Party who is board chair of the uh, Ghana National Petroleum Company, GMPC, Freddie Wasmeobli, former MP for Ellen Bele, former Plenty Things. Uh, but let's leave it there.